Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. This is gonna, yeah. This is gonna <laughs> be the good stuff. <laughs> we got here. Like, it's been good stuff up to this point, right? But, and I'm, I'm struggling to uh, collect this idea on the paper form for the inevitable debrief of Final Fantasy VI, but this is where all the good stuff coalesced. Yeah. Into this, I say without hyperbole, almost perfect game. It's, uh, even just in these first six, well, you know, not the three, because we just counting yeah, three, yeah. Like, the leaps and bounds that they made, like, it's just, mm -hmm. it's growing so exponentially at how yeah. good the games are getting, and then this. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and this just, th this just object of beauty is what Final Fantasy VI is. It's like, they just figured it out at this point. They're like, you know what's really cool? If we mix really, uh, you know, cool technology with mm -hmm. magic and, and a medieval sort of fantasy. Well, the there's an immediate... Um, there's an immediate contrast between those two, mm -hmm. which creates an immediate tension mm -hmm. just in the idea that you see Terra, and she's wearing this brightly colored fantastical garment. And she's riding atop this brown and black mechanical monster. And just from looking at that, you know that there's something going down between, you know, two different sects. In this case, yeah, there's the uh, technology-driven empire and the rest of the world, basically. That's a weird sentence. Yeah. That's also a weird sentence, but it's okay. Ah, uh, shit. Were those enemies... There were enemies in um, 5 that I was like, oh, wow, that's, you can really start to see them uh -huh. do the whole organic, mm. uh, mechanical design yeah. here. I forget what they were, but... It was um, up on that floating city, I think, where you had a light... Oh, that's right. Like, They're the, um, the cannons that were defending the, the floating <clears throat> city. And now you have the Magitek armor, which takes that to its... to such a logical extreme that in recent years they've gone back to using almost this exact yeah, design. Yeah, Like, this appears in 14 as well. I think we didn't get it as a mount. Yeah, the Magitek... Which is almost enough to get me to play Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> yeah. Magitek armor in 15 mm -hmm. is pretty cool. It's fun fighting that shit. Yeah. It's like, it's so great. It doesn't even move. I mean, it moves mechanically. It's just that whole motif of mm -hmm. uh, organic, you know, God, medieval versus right there. yeah, versus the mechanical. Like it's like they're riding war elephants. You know. Yeah, yeah. They are. Like I said, they're mechanical <laughs> monsters. More than anything, those are just monsters that were made out of metal instead of flesh. Like you're always fighting. Could you imagine for the first time, like back in the day, coming off of five right into this mm -hmm. and just seeing? Or if this? you're in the states, coming from four yeah. into this, <laughs> yeah. Just like right now, already the the music, the mm -hmm. mood. I mean, I, I get those cutscenes wouldn't have been there, but no, but well, just, yeah, just coming into that title screen right there with the the pan down and the build up to the first keys of that music, or chords. I don't know music, but. And right away, you can see that this differenti differentiates itself from the other Final Fantasies we've played, just with its tile sets. Like, most of the other ones we've played, the colors mm -hmm. are mostly bright, they're mostly primary, or just solid colors. Yeah. These are muted, these are browns, these are really, these are gray-blues. There's art, much stronger art direction yeah. now. It's not just, it's not just, this is a snowfield, so it's white. It's this is a snowy mountain and precipice, and it's covered in rock. And yeah, because old, old icy snow, mm -hmm. not just fresh powdery snow. Because you can make a snowy mountain look inviting, or mm -hmm. you can make it look desolate and dead. Yeah, you can make that. This is a coal mine city, like it said, and that looks like the snow around a, a coal mine. And look at that city way back there, just existing on the edge mm -hmm. of the fucking the wall, the cliff walls, you see like the buildings and shit down there. Yeah. 
in this precipice overlooking it. One lone root or branch. Yeah. It's not just the same tile repeated over and over. And you can see, like obviously this is a, a tile set, but it, and it, you can see a repeating pattern, but it's not as aggressive as it has been before. And it's regularly broken up yeah, by mm -hmm. irregular bits. And so even though there is an obvious repetition, uh, those small little bits breaking it up uh, distract you from it. You think that very background was just some like cliff.jpg? That, that, they... <laughs> that, that's almost certainly cliff.jpg. Yeah. And then they, they... I mean, it's even that itself is repeated as uh -huh. well. It's like one little cliff and like boop, boop, boop. And they mistakenly used cliff.jpg that had one F and it was like uh -huh. some dude's uncle and he's like, <laughs> oh, what am I in the game for? Hmm. And look how big these sprites are. Mm hmm. Right? Think about what they were like in 5. <laughs> Our characters probably would have gone from the foot of the armor to the elbow. Yeah. Right? That's That amount of space is used just for the heads of these characters. It's opened up so much. So you can immediately... Look at all the detail you can get in there. You can immediately tell, okay, these guys are some kind of soldiers because they're wearing the, the helmets. You can tell the helmets even cover their eyes, mm -hmm. which obviously robs them of their humanity. That's an easy tactic to take, but... Then you go into this shit... And so this is kind of on point with the uh, type of animation I was talking about yeah. in, in 5. Or yeah, I, I wanted yeah. to spill about this, but I, I decided we would wait for this because it's only like 10 minutes later. God. Like this is... I, I will always get chills watching this. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's the point, right? There's yeah. this snowfall. Yeah. You just... You know what it's like walking slowly through snow, and it's just... Yeah, the music, the colors, everything about this. This is just... It's just letting you take it in. It's just slow. It's very quiet. Mm -hmm. You have the music, but even the music is this not terribly fast... Um, God, I wish I knew more musical terminology, but it itself has taken its time. Mm -hmm. It feels like an adventure. It feels like the journey of a thousand miles and this first step. It's cool, too, because this isn't starting off like, hey, here's our heroes, mm -hmm. here are the people that are, um, you know, our reluctant heroes coming to save the day, having yeah. a goofy adventure. It's like, what is this? Are these two soldiers talking? Mm -hmm. I, oh, don't, uh, I don't know who they are. Then mm -hmm. there's an enslaved woman? Yeah, the woman who is obviously completely apart from them, because they blend in with their armor. They've mm -hmm. got the brown armor going on, and then they're in the Magitech, and it looks like them. They look like it, but she, like I said, is wearing this bright red garment, has bright green hair. She looks human, but also a bit off from humanity. Mm -hmm. Like she's only 80% of the way there. Like you've said, Yokotano, Yoshitaka <laughs> Amano seemed to be in love with Terra when you look at his concept art for her. Like she's probably a good fifth of the second book of the sky. Let's put her up front so yeah. she gets hurt first. Yeah, exactly. Which is a great way to say this is how who you're controlling. <laughs> yeah. Like, These holy the, shit. Yeah, Biggs and Wedge. I think this is the first appearance of Biggs and Wedge as well. The yeah, portrait of Biggs and Wedge. There's this musician that I, I love, and he's got a few bands. And one of his bands is called Imperial State Electric. Mm -hmm. And he typically wears, like, a... Um, a like general like or like a sort of military looking cap that looks like their helmets. Uh -huh. uh, I want to just pull up the album just so you can see what I'm talking about. Because ever since I I learned about this band, I always whenever I saw the album cover it rem or just the way he looks, it makes me think of that yeah. portrait. Like especially uh -huh. this portrait of him riding this beast yeah. and carrying a flag. Well, that's a very that's a very uh, like that, that looks like that, yeah, that, that looks does. like the yeah. portraits. Look up look up Imperial State Electric Pop War and look mm -hmm. at the album. That's Biggs and Wedge's. Yeah. Well, that portrait. that design is a very totalitarian one because, mm -hmm. like I said, once you once you take away someone's eyes, they they lose their humanity. Now yeah. they're just a soldier, and for the Empire, they're just soldiers. They're not Biggs and Wedge. They're just two soldiers they sent to uh, escort this particular woman. For the city. 
And and the fact that you're because you control Biggs and Wedge right here, right? Right here, yeah. You're in control of them. I I don't think I knew as a kid, right, playing this mm -hmm. that. I'm like, well, these are the characters I'm controlling. Yeah. They all must be good mm -hmm. because they're my characters. Like, why else would I get control of them? I don't think I'd ever experienced a yeah. game where it's like, no, you these aren't good characters. You're just controlling them because it's part of the story. And I, I wasn't able to really process that as a kid and and ex, you know really, um, let's really be able to understand how good of storytelling that is and yeah. gameplay, but now You're, looking back, I'm like, that's so different. Like, that's hard, such a mm -hmm. different thing to do. Yeah. But Final Fantasy VI is where they thought big, finally. And part of that, almost paradoxically... Paradoxically? 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 Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, part of that is that they think subtly as well. So there, there are gray areas in this game, a lot of them, and it opens up and you're controlling um, two soldiers of the Empire and the, the woman the Empire has enslaved. And these people you're fighting are just the, the townspeople of this city. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, you, you are the invader right now. But even later, uh, you come back here and the, to ask the people of Nars for help, and they are hesitant to help you. A, because you killed a bunch of them. Yeah. And B, because they don't necessarily want a part of this war. So even they aren't necessarily good or bad. They're just people who want to live their lives, and there's this empire going on, and the returners who are fighting the empire, and they're just caught in the middle. They're only they're only getting attacked right now because they had the misfortune of finding an esper, which had been frozen in ice. And they just mined. They were mm -hmm. just mining. And now they're just yeah. murdering these people and dogs. Just... <laughs> Now we're just killing all their people and all their dogs. I like how they are um, introducing you to this idea of, hey, here's what a pincer attack looks like. Yeah, that's a good way to do it, because a lot of games, the first time it happens, it just happens. And you're like, well, what the hell is this? And I've played enough of these games to know what it is. But if it was your first time playing one of these mm -hmm. games, you'd be like, well, what the hell? What's going on? It's like, well, it's really going to hurt if they hit you in the butt. Yeah, so deal with it. So they are there rows in this game? There are, yes. The, um, Would I, these enemies be considered like the guards in the back row and the vamoths in the front um, row? Actually, I don't think enemies are beholden to that row system the way they've been before. Uh, I, I, your, your party is, of course. Um, I, I've put them all in the back row just because they're all using magic attacks anyway. So they get the defense boost, but no attack deficit. But I think you can attack any enemy in any row, and they'll still take the full amount of damage. The one thing that I wish for, and speaking of rows, mm -hmm. the one thing that I wish for is in this beginning segment, if they didn't have the uh, fanfare and the celebratory oh, yeah, arm yeah, pump. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just because it's a little strange. It's a bit strange. In the, but I, I, I guess that Biggs and it makes sense for the soul. doing it. It makes sense for the Biggs and yeah. And then, because they're yeah. they're they're scoring glorious victories. If uh, if she didn't though, that would be uh, real cool. If she, but I imagine that must have been difficult to program that. That yeah, they they do some complicated things here, but I imagine that was difficult for them to program. Plus, it's also a great way of saying like, hey, this is still Final Fantasy. Yeah. Like, remember, uh -huh. oh, where rats. And you could you could consider the fact that she is under their control, mm -hmm. and she, to an extent, she's probably mimicking just what they do. And that makes it kind of sick too in that, a storytelling yeah, way. That's very disgusting. That they're like, no, you celebrate. Uh -huh. You just murdered these yeah. people and their animals. Like you celebrate too. And they're like, oh. And she's like, ah. Like mm -hmm. somewhere deep inside her mind, she's like, this isn't right. Yeah. She gets a whole bunch of spells that they don't. It's just, she just was wasting people. Like, you think about yeah. what this is like, bio. Like, mm -hmm. everyone's like, get out of our town. And she's like, poisoned to death. Exactly. All she, of you die. Yeah, she, she's just spraying uh, chemical weapons all over this city. Like, she's not even really humanely yeah. killing these mm -hmm. people. It's just like, I'm going to poison you. Maybe yeah. you'll die. Maybe someone else that it'll, that's not even involved in this fight yeah. will die. <laughs> yeah, and... and like I said, eventually you come back to this town to ask for their help, and they do something that I love, which they also do later in Seven, where they call you out on the atrocities you committed. Yeah. It's like, you, you, you killed a bunch of us. 
Why the hell will we help you? Why should we trust you? And you can't fault him at all for it. Mm -hmm. It's it's not the the common trope of like you show up and you explain it and like oh okay. We're dumb. We, We're cool. We'll do what you say, Mr. Yeah. Spiky hair. By the way, I, I've left in these fights simply because this is the opening segment. Uh, the way I the way I edited most of this playthrough, what I've done is I've used the first fight, the transition into it, as basically a form of a fade out. Mm -hmm. And then I use the fade in from the last fight before the next story bit okay. as my transition. Cool. So you'll see eventually I'll be walking around like a cavern, and then it'll do the swirl into a fight, and then it'll go to black for a moment, and then fade back in, and I'm talking to somebody. Do you remember the advertisements for this game? No, I don't. I They completely avoided me for some reason. So it, there was a, a Moogle sitting behind a desk basically casting auditions for monsters for uh -huh. the game, and it was all uh, practical effects and puppets and stuff. Yeah. And the, I believe the Moogle would basically just say next and like zap the enemies <laughs> like that he didn't like. And uh -huh. so this led my brother to believe this was a much different game than it was going to be. Yeah. And so we went to the video game rental place and he's like, yeah, let's get that one. I saw the commercial for that. It looked funny. And I was like, I had already played Final Fantasy 2 and, um, you know, probably Final Fantasy. Yeah, I know I'd play Final Fantasy 1. Uh -huh. I knew what I was getting into because I was into this shit. And he was like, we get it home and put it in, and then it's this, and it was not what he wanted. Yeah. Was he expecting something more action-y? Yeah. Real but time, it, yeah. But I'm like, this is, like, this is really cool, man. Yeah. Like, this is, uh, there, you don't stop. Like, the ATB is going, like, Yeah, like, the, the ATB creates that tension where you're waiting for your turn to come up and just hoping you can get something in before the enemy does. But then it just meant that I got to play it, which is That's great. fine. Yeah. <laughs> And then I think from then on, my brother just, whenever he heard RPG, he was just like, uh-uh. Yeah, and that's understandable. And like, it's a very then. specific genre for a specific type of people. Look at that shell. Yeah. Look at the detail and the accurate perspective on that shell. It's a spiral. It's beautiful. And the highlight <laughs> and the color. Yeah. Beautiful spiral. I want to climb inside. Oh, man, just let me get all up inside that spiral with let that well. Let me just eat that well a little bit. Let me oh, just eat its face. Oh, man. Ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Uh yeah, the the highlights on the shell uh -huh. to me say this thing is oily mm -hmm. and greasy because look how <laughs> fucking hot those highlights yeah. are. As a kid, that gave me such problems. I did not realize like how to kill that thing the yeah. first time, and then I actually well, it's <laughs> it's it's funny because it's a precursor to the uh, guard scorpion in Final Fantasy VII, mm -hmm. where the poor localization is like attack its t attack while its tail is up. Yeah. Exclamation point. Yeah. A yeah. completely different sentence. It will it will counter attack with its laser. Yep. Yeah. Right. Like I got I got destroyed by that fucking tail laser multiple times before I figured it out. It's almost like it would have been better if it said nothing and you found out naturally. Yeah. Oh, when I attacked with its tail up, it ki kicked my ass. Mm-hmm. When I attacked when it was in its shell, it hurt me bad. <laughs> yeah, so th this is the whole reason they came here, yes. is this Esper Tritok. Which they found frozen in ice, and I guess they, I guess someone told somebody, and it got back to the Empire. The music changed, right? Yeah. It's now this very slow, very, very slow... Um, Very like somber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're you're writing magical armor. You're wondering where lights like coming yeah. from. You should. You're, you're you're writing magical armor in front of a magical beast. What a contrast in like I don't know because it. it Wedge and Biggs are dead now. They're dead. But what a contrast in how they were killed, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't like getting fire or missiles launched at them. It was just, you're gone. Yeah, basically. This thing is so powerful that it just winked them out of existence. Then obviously there's an immediate connection between these two. They made a mistake bringing her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they probably shouldn't have brought the Esper girl to meet the Esper. The Esper might have a problem with that. <laughs> Spoiler, by the way, for this 20-some-odd-year-old game. Can you believe it's that old? 
Fucking look at that! Look at this game! Yeah, I know. Look at this tile set, like, look at yeah. the bricks here's and everything. The, here's the ah. thing, because the, the tile set, they, they made it this complex mosaic of bricks, so that even when it repeats, you can't notice. Mm. Or if you do notice, it makes complete sense, because it's fucking brick! Yeah. But it's not simply like, you know, a, it's not like a solid square of color, so it doesn't bother you. Look at the walls, look at the floor, look at the, the the trim on the bottom. Yeah. It's not just brick all the way to the floor, except where it is, because it makes architectural sense. And the walls aren't perfectly flat. There's those, like, I yeah. guess, pilaster kind of segments mm -hmm. that come out, and that's fucking they, fantastic. Yeah, they've given it depth. Like, the... Six is the culmination of everything they learned from four and five, just on a graphical scale. It's a real... And then from a story perspective, it's the culmination of everything they've learned from the past five games. I wish there was one more 2D mm -hmm. after six before going yeah, into seven. Me I mean, too. Just one more. Oh, imagine. Just, ah, uh, mm -hmm. fuck. <laughs> if they could have expanded upon what they learned here, yeah. even, yeah. Well, like, they kind of did, I suppose, with Chrono Cross. Or Chrono Trigger. Yeah, that's true. To an extent. Obviously, it's not Final Fantasy, but it's adjacent. Mm-hmm. And like I've said, the, these sprites are at least twice the size what they were in 5. I think the sprites in Chrono Trigger are twice the size of this, even. Yeah. Oh yeah, they are pretty big. Just yeah. thinking about it, they're like, "Hey guys, we can go bigger. It's cool." Yeah. App apparently, you 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 learn this if you get through the uh, if very secret ending in the PlayStation One version of Chrono Trigger. But they they talk about the difficulty of programming the game on the Super Nintendo with those very big sprites, mm -hmm. and apparently that was part of the reason that game was like seventy dollars, eighty dollars when it came out. Chrono Trigger was expensive. Look at the fire. Look, look at, the at the fire. Look at the fireplace mm -hmm. and the bricks. Look at the green in the bricks. Oh yeah, that yeah. is ah, like it's... that. That is the <laughs> best. Like that doesn't. Uh -huh. You wouldn't think that green and red bricks would make sense, but you see it there, and you're like, that is that's painting. Yeah. Also, always click on the clocks. <laughs> they usually have elixirs. Fuck this game. <laughs> 